Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in PUBG in 2025. Gotta start by optimizing Windows, and after that we're going to take a look on your Radiant Pyrinder, and after that Nvidia if you have an Nvidia card, and at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings, and we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're going to start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to disactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processors. If you have any other processor, just disactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is disactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then uh, with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power uh back then uh, we were recommending to use the best performance but now honestly just use balance you will have better boost clock longer boost clock uh, i did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance and honestly i'm getting better result with balance so super important to do that Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS, super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest update from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. Quick break to show you something that I've been using lately. Uh, the Silk Lens Certify HDMI 2.1 cable. It's one of the rare cables on the market that actually HDMI 2.1 certify. You can even scan the QR code to verify it. And uh, if you're into gaming, uh, this thing is perfect for 4K at 120Hz on PS5 or Xbox. It also handles 144Hz on PC with no suite. It's built tough too. Uh, Silk Lens use uh, what they call an e-braid tech with a double layer nylon braid and ferrite beads to cut signal interference. No flickering, no black screen, just stable high speed video up to 48 gigabytes. It also support 8K Dynamic HDR, Dolby Atmos, uh, DTSX, basically all the next-gen format you expect for both video and audio. So if you upgrade your console or display, don't bottleneck the setup with a cheap cable. I will leave you the link uh, below if you want to check it out. It's the one I trust for my PS5 and when I plug my PC in my LG OLED C2. So for NVIDIA, so first of all, when you click PUBG, as you can see, we can't force the LSS because it's not compatible. So nothing that we can do here. Global settings. So first of all, make sure that your low latency mode is at on. I like to lock my FPS at 237 because I have a 240 Hertz monitor. And because I'm using G-Sync, I need to stay in my G-Sync range. So for example, if my game run 241 FPS, I'm going to lose my G-Sync on my monitor. So my recommendation is always take your amount of Hertz minus 3 and lock your FPS with that. If you install a lot of game on your PC, I recommend to upgrade your shader cache size, but you will need the space on your hard drive. Uh, by default, if you're using default for NVIDIA, if I remember correctly, they're using 5 gig, uh, but definitely go with 10 or even 100, uh, less stuttering. You don't need to rebuild your shader, shader cache if your folder is full. So definitely it's a good add-on over there. In this system section, I recommend to use your G-Sync. So activate it over here on. So you can select full screen or full screen window. For sure, make sure that your uh, monitor is compatible. And also, you will need to activate it on your monitor. Also, in the display properties, make sure that your uh, resolution here uh, is native. And also, make sure that you're uh, selecting the IS refresh rate. As you can see, mine is 240. I know a lot of people, they're buying a monitor, but they're still running it at 60. So super important to do that. 
And the last one in the color section, if you have a good monitor compatible with HDR, normally you should put your output color depth at 10 and your output dynamic range at full. Uh, for PUBG, the, the game is very gray, so if you want to have better color and to see uh, your enemy, uh, Digital Vibrance, I just always add 5%, so by default it's 50, now I'm using 55. It's a little bit better to see enemy. Last one that I'm doing is the uh, performance section, power maximum, I always put it at the max, 133%. You're gonna make sure that you all, your the GPU will always have um, uh, more power into it, so it's better for the algorithm. Your boost clock will be higher, a little bit longer. Uh, normally, you can have like 5 to 7% boost in your FPS with this, but you know, it's the NVIDIA algorithm, so if you don't have good thermals, uh, it will not affect anything so you will have pretty much the same boost clock so you need some uh, um, room to your thermals to to make sure that it's working properly so now let's go to the ra radiant parameter so now for radiant card we're gonna go to settings display first make sure that you're using your free sync if you have a monitor compatible with it you're gonna make sure that you're gonna synchronize your gpu with your monitor so really important to use that after that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluid motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one, this one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me, so you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer, but sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed, just go to Assassin's Creed, and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in-game or a sharpness slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging. But uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty. So this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver. And I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort. So you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. Now inside of the game, so first of all, uh, display settings over there, make sure that you're playing full screen. This is the best parameter to have less input lag 
and most of your FPS. Resolution, make sure that you're playing native, so depending on your monitor. I just capped my FPS in the lobby at 60. In game, I just play unlimited, but honestly, I lock my FPS, uh, like I said, uh, with Nvidia at 237 to make sure that I'm staying in my uh, V-Sync uh, G-Sync range. Smooth frame rate, disable this. You don't want to turn that on. And also it adds input lag. And this is pretty much it. In the advanced section, the first one is render scale. To have a better visibility, I just put this one at maximum at 120. But you need to have a lot of FPS to do that. So for an example, you have a 144 Hertz monitor. You're playing at 141 and uh, everything is stable. Definitely put some render scale uh, a little bit higher. The default is 100, so this is like just native. Uh, but if you want better visibility, you can uh, crank this up. But if you don't have those FPS and you need performance, this will tank your FPS. You're going to lose like 8% to 10% when you're playing at 120. First person, I just play at 90. I feel like uh, I'm a little bit uh, zoomed in when I, I shoot 100, uh, 20, uh, 103. Honestly, it's too far for me. So that's why I'm playing at 90 for the FOV. It's a question of preference. A lot of people are playing at maximum. But uh, if you're going higher, you're going to lose a couple of FPS with this one. Anti-aliasing, I like to play at medium. Very low for me, too much noise in the image, even low. Medium is a good balance. After that, the game looks too blurry. Honestly, this game really needs some DLSS and or FSR. It will really help for that. Post-processing, very low. Better visibility and a nice 6% boost in your FPS. Shadow, again, too much noise when you go too low. And also, it will help to see enemies in, uh, in houses and stuff like that. You can see a lot better the, um, the, the shadow. Low is not bad. So if you're struggling with your FPS, honestly, the low can be a good se setting. But for the majority of the people, medium should be fine. Texture, uh, it really depends on the amount of VRAM that you have on your GPU. So 8 gig and more ultra, 6 gig high, 4 gig medium, 3 gig low, and less than 3 gig go with very low. After that, in the FX section, very low, foliage very low. It will help a lot with your FPS. 10% boost with uh, both at very low over there and better visibility also. View distance for object. I like to play at height. It's um, less pop-in, less visual distraction. But this one tanks your FPS. It's like 3% for each bracket. So for the majority of the people, play at medium. Uh, depending on now how much FPS that you need. If you're really struggling with your FPS, go with low for this one. Sharpen, I like to play enable. The game looks too, too blurry without it. I'm, I hope sometimes it's just going to release some slider, 0 to 100%, and you can just move it. V-Sync disabled to have less input lag. Motion blur disabled. You don't want this effect. Get too blurry. And the last one is your API. You have three different options. Honestly, for 80% of the people, DirectX 11 and Ns is the best one uh, for, to stabilize your FPS and also um, to have more FPS. If you're playing on a very old computer, 9, 10 years ago, something like that, Definitely test the DirectX 11. DirectX 12, uh, it can be good with like newer uh, GPU. If you have a 5080, 5090, 4090, something like that, test it out. Um, I got better result on my 9070 XT with DirectX 12 versus the 11 and ns So definitely do some testing with this one. But normally for the majority of the people, DirectX 11 and ns is the best one. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my PUBG 2025 guide. If you have any questions, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.